Uh, man. Yeah, so I know this was supposed to be out on Friday, but to be honest, I had to rewatch some of these. <clears throat> All right, so you guys asked, and since I am such a generous person, you shall receive. What? Well, don't get me wrong. Actually, I just kind of decided at the end of last video to make this video, and I guess I'm just delivering. There we go. Yeah, we'll just go with that. Anyway, kind of works out because, as I mentioned before, I had to rewatch some of these movies in order to come out with a pretty clear and confident list. Some ranging from really good to, well, I guess they're just on my screen. I might as well obviously say that this list, my list, is not the list. It's insanely rare for people to truly have the same exact opinions, therefore making the same exact list. The point of lists such as these is to have discussions because at the end of the day we're all just spider-man fans but on a brighter note there are exactly 10 spider-man movies which is probably the first time in the history of my life that i've ever seen a perfect top 10 for a f oh! oh god i hope i'm still a part of the family anyway here's my top 10 spider-man movies from worst to best Number 10. Ah, oh, man. Unlucky, huh? I didn't mention in the intro of the video, but I'm not going to go too much in depth on each of these movies because, well, we've already seen them. And as much as I don't want the video to go on for an additional 30 minutes of rambling of movies that you've already seen, eventually just getting bored of watching and inevitably returning to a superior channel. Now imagine the rant I just went on and apply that to The Amazing Spider-Man 2. There's just a lot going on that obviously feels like it should have been separated into two different movies. But while I wasn't there behind the scenes, and that's research I definitely will not be doing, it just led to the movie feeling bloated and feeling as if there's so much going on, but yet so forgettable. Not a match made in heaven, to say the least. Number nine. This was one of those movies that mentioned previously I had to rewatch, and I'm happy I did because it would have been definitely higher on my list for sure, and wrongly so. I mean, let me just put it bluntly. This Peter is just, he's just an idiot in this movie. Okay, and now don't get me wrong. He's a kid, a teenager, a chicken. I get it. But man, simply to just give the Edith glasses to somebody that you've known for like two days is pretty out of this world. And honestly, a massive pile of T-Rex shit. They did manage to somehow make the villain Mysterio kind of cool in a way on the big screen. And at least we can all say that we remember that one scene with the illusions. And for that, you're not in last place. Number eight. Uh, you might as well do it. You might as well just get out your pitchforks, Marvel fans. I can hear the Tom Holland hate from a mile away. And well, I might as well just confirm it. I don't think Tom Holland is interesting. This was obviously the other movie I had to rewatch, which made me realize I've only seen these MCU Spider-Man movies one sole time each. And after rewatching, I understand why. Tom Holland's iteration of Peter Parker is just simply not interesting. Yes, I understand the car scene. It was good. But like, whoa, what else do we really have going on? And I understand that's not really the fault of the actor playing the character in regards to the direction that the MCU was going with the relationship of him and Iron Man. But man, Tom Holland is just so boring. And I'm willing to go down on that hill. But at the end of the day, I should say something good. I like this iteration of the Vulture, picking up the scraps from a different battle in order to create his own suit is a pretty solid analogy. And rather the writers meant that to be the case or not, 
I'll give it that. Congratulations. There's one thumbs up. Number seven. Ooh. Oh, God, it's so sad. Oh, the black suit, the black suit theme, the Peter Parker being a dork scene, the see you chump. Ah, oh, man, so unlucky. Anyway, Spider-Man 3 pretty much encompasses most of what I said about the amazing Spider-Man 2 and the fact that it's simply just too bloated. But honestly, way more silly in this one. The new Goblin? Silly. The introduction of Venom? Silly. Mary Jane in this movie? Man, just plain silly. It's unfortunate too, because as a kid, this was truly an all-timer for me. But now as an adult, I realize that I enjoyed it so much as a kid, because it's so nonsensical and silly that I feel like it was just made for my tiny little 11-year-old brain. To sum it all up, Topher Grace as Venom is just plain silly. Number six. <clears throat> ah, man. So number six and number five were probably the two hardest movies to rank, if I'm being completely honest. Two separate movies that were sent out to accomplish two different goals. But unfortunately... For me, it's hard to get behind the relationship of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man and Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy. I don't know. When re-watching, it's as if one of them, or even both of them, just have the most rancid breath in the history of life. So their chemistry is just simply non-existent. Which is weird, because they're both pretty incredible at their craft outside of this movie. But at least now, we're starting to get into some films that I actually did enjoy for the majority of the runtime. I did like the death of Captain Stacy and the promise that he gave to Peter because it makes his character even more interesting for the future, but that was pretty much retconned immediately. So I guess add that to the list to why these movies kind of failed. Number five. Ooh. All right, since I'm a relatively smaller channel, the majority of you guys will be new to my channel and this video as a whole. So allow me to enlighten you, my dear viewer. Spider-Man No Way Home is better known as Spider-Man fan service around these parts, and for good reason. As confirmed earlier in this video, I wake up to hate when it comes to Tom Holland. And well, he and MJ were the weakest part of his own movie again. Obviously, my biggest gripe with the film itself is that Dr. Dumbass is just an idiot, but everyone is an idiot now since the ending of Endgame, so can I really fault that? At least they're being consistent, so what can I really expect? At the end of the day, all the returning characters of Doc Ock, Toby, Andrew, Willem hard carried this film. Let's be real, would anybody have even been bothered if Tom Holland and Dr. Dumbass just dipped out of the movie halfway through when our actual good characters showed up? No, definitely not. So yes, while Spider-Man fan service was good fan service, unfortunately, I can't allow that to carry a film. And honestly, it's insane that I even put it up this high. I might have to retcon number six and number five. Number four. Ooh. At this point, we're getting into high A and damn near god tier territory. Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man, a film that truly kicked off the superhero genre to a point that we all know it as now, and it was truly groundbreaking for its time. Willem Dafoe. I mean, mwah, chef's kiss. One of the best Spider-Man villain portrayals that we have ever seen even to this day. Simply legendary. And the casting didn't just stop there. From James Franco to Kirsten Dunst to Tobey Maguire, all playing their respective roles so brilliantly and seamlessly with each other that just made everything feel so grounded and believable to a point where after one film, you're already invested in these characters. And J.K. Simmons, come on now. Again, mwah, chef's kiss. This movie really had it all going for it. And while coming out around the same time as the original X-Men movies, if you're anywhere around my age, you'll always remember the first time you watched Spider-Man.
Number three. Ooh. Yeah, we're pretty much in the S tiers now. Obviously, like most people, I rewatched this film in preparation for watching its sequel. And let me tell you, a newfound love for this film has awakened within me for the very first time since I watched it all the way back in theaters. And while I truly took my time with this list to make sure I wasn't holding any recency bias towards it, I came to the conclusion, nah, this film's just God tier. The animation style is a fresh new take on the big screen, especially over here in the West, and truly put the movie on the map despite the lackluster box office when it was first released all the way back in 2018. But this is one of the strongest cast of characters that we've probably ever seen in a Spider-Man movie. Miles Morales, again, mwah, third joke of the video, chef's kiss. For a character on the big screen for the first time, Miles really captured the essence of Spider-Man, the friendly neighborhood one. And because of that, with the addition of great character writing and animation, it makes the movie so digestible and investing. And as the title of my review says, welcome Miles Morales. Number two. Ooh. Man, I, I said that number five and number six were probably the hardest, but I'm going to retcon that one too. This truly racked my brain. And I guess that's why I mentioned in the intro that my list is not the list. Spider-Man 2 is incredible, especially from a character writing point of view, and honestly is a movie that doesn't really have many flaws. From the action sequences and the character beats throughout the movie, you're completely immersed now into the world of Spider-Man and the possibility of other superheroes being on the big screen. From memorable scenes like stopping the train from derailing to dodging the car in the cafe with his spider sense, it was all awesome to watch. This is also the second movie in a row where we have an incredible villain. Makes sense that both of these guys were the main caring force of Spider-Man fan service. Watching Otto Octavius go from a nurturing mentor to Peter to being controlled by the sentient arms is devastating. And man, that ending. Ah, oh, man, it's crazy because I'm just even like reminiscing. At the end of the day, while this is a list, and there can only be one number one, that doesn't mean Spider-Man 2 isn't damn near perfection. Number one. Ooh. Oh, God, what a W movie. I thought I truly had so many reasons to make Across the Spider-Verse my number one movie, but honestly, when getting down to the nitty gritty, I just simply care about Miles Morales' character more than I do any iteration of Peter Parker. The plot twist of Miles' destiny as Spider-Man is simply too top tier for me to not make it number one on my list. And honestly, when I'm thinking into the future, it's easy for me to believe that we're looking at an Infinity War or a Dead Man's Chest situation where the sequel, the setup, will stand taller than the payoff. Which is not bad at all. The character direction that was taken for Across the Spider-Verse is just new, fresh, innovative. The canon events are interesting. Yes, they always are. It's what makes Spider-Man, Spider-Man. But not Miles. And man, I was just blown away. So impressive and simply so entertaining. I have to give a big old congratulations to Miles Morales. You are truly my favorite favorite iteration of big screen Spider-Man. Okay, well, there you go. Again, I am going to repeat myself. My list is not the list. And that's the point of the comment section. Of course, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I do have Transformers Rise of the Beast coming up. I do I am excited for that. Obviously, another shameless plug is going uh, in this video for my Across the Spider-Verse and my Into the Spider-Verse reviews, especially if you want to hear in greater detail why I placed it number one on my list. And let me tell you, I'm ready for those debates. Put them up. But otherwise, this video is already super long, so that's all the words I got for you today.
Bye.